Hello grade 12s. Today I'm looking at the 2014 trials paper. This is a two-point perspective drawing. The mark allocation for this is 30 marks, which is quite light. They generally tend to be a 40 mark question in the final paper. All things considered, they have not given you too many openings. I would say your most challenging part is drawing this fireplace, getting the correct slope, and something new for grade 12 where you have to do a circle, semicircle in this case. With any semicircle, any circle that we do when we think of cams and helix loci, we always have to divide that up into your segments, your pizza slices, and it will be no different here. We're going to have to do the same type of thing to help find the points of our semicircle. So that's the only new part. And let's get started with this. Your aim wants to be that by the metric final paper, you want to be able to complete your perspective drawing in 40 minutes. While I'm doing this drawing, try and do it step by step. Watch a short bit of the video, then do the same thing on your drawing. I'm hoping that we're not going to have a problem with the lines. I just don't know how it's coming out in your drawings if you're able to see the lines when we do the drawing. The first thing that I want to do in a two-point perspective drawing is I want to find my vanishing points and label them. There is a mark allocated for them. In this situation, only a half a mark. To find my vanishing points, what I need to do is look at the angles that are involved, that the shape is top view has been positioned up against the picture plane. Remember our lines, picture plane, horizon line, ground line, stationary point. These could all be all over the show. It's a process that you need to follow. And it doesn't matter where they put the picture plane, horizon line, ground line, stationary point. It follows the same process. So on this side we've got a 30 degree angle. On this side we have a 60 degree angle. We must project parallel to the side from the stationary point up to the picture plane. So on this side, I'm going to project my 30 degree line. Now just to make sure I don't get confused, what I want to do is just draw it on this edge here. There is my point just inside here. Where it hits the picture plane, I now take it down vertically to hit the horizon line. The horizon line is where my vanishing point is, and I've now labeled that the right vanishing point. On the other side, it's at 60 degrees, so once again parallel from the stationary point. Project my line up to hit the picture plane, where it hits the picture plane, I take that line down now to where it hits the horizon line and I'm labeling that my left vanishing point. There's a half a mark each for getting the correct one. Remember, take it parallel from the stationary point to hit the picture plane and then down. With our point that touches the picture plane, 
that line I've drawn down vertically and it matches my stationary point. It doesn't have to match your stationary point, but in this case it does. So don't be surprised maybe if your stationary point is another point that is some other process that we need to follow, which we'll get onto a bit later. But remember, it can be anywhere. Your picture plane or your horizon line could be higher than your picture plane. So don't be confused at all. Follow the same process. If any other line touches the picture plane, we could draw a line down. And those are height lines. There aren't any other lines that are touching in this situation. So this is us, what I refer to as the center line. The center line, why? Because we then take any height measurements to the center line and we project them across to our vanishing points. Any points that we have in our top view, we need to project to the stationary point. But where it hits the picture plane, we then project it down vertically. Same process and you need to remember that. I'm going to try and start by just identifying the different components that you might have here. First of all I've got this patio Here is the patio, and the same on this side. That is my sort of lowest height there, so this is what I'm probably going to start with, getting this little patio shape. What else do we see here? Well, we've got the semicircle. We know it's a semicircle on this side, and this is the thickness of that opening. So here is that semicircle because it's got the center line there. Here is the center line for the semicircle in the left view. Over here I've got a bry. Here is my bry. Here is the chimney. And there's the chimney sticking out over here. At the top, there is the little bit I see of the chimney and my bride. This is this back wall here and the other side of this opening. Another thing that is worthwhile remembering is just which direction do your lines need to go? So anything that is on this 30 degree line here needs to be a line that is going to be coming to my right vanishing point. Any line that is on my 60 degree line needs to be coming towards my left vanishing point. So sometimes in some drawings where there's sort of a lot of changes of direction, it's worth just remembering which points are going to which vanishing point. I'm going to try and do this little patio section now. So the patio starts touching my picture plane, ends touching this wall, and then goes in slightly underneath the roof. So that is my start point. I'm going to try and find that little possibly square shape. The first thing I want to do is take my height dimension across. There is the height of the patio. And I can then take those towards both vanishing points. On my pink line going towards the right vanishing point, 
it ends touching the wall over here so I take that corner and I project it towards my stationary point but where it hits the picture plane I stop here is this back corner project it to my stationary point Here is the corner going to the left vanishing point in blue and take those points down. Where they hit I now project vertical lines. I'm just going to take it down to this actual point because I don't want to make it too dark here. So there's my point here. Remember this is a vertical line now. And there is where it's hitting on this side. There are the edges of the patio. Now, if I project from this point here, going in that direction, it will mean it is a blue line. So that means from this corner I would now project to my left vanishing point. From this corner that I found over here, I would then be going towards my right vanishing point. Here's the intersection which should line up with this back corner. So that would be a little way to check how your drawing is going for accuracy. Is if we had to project that down, you can see that it intersects. So I'm happy with the accuracy of my drawing. And there is the outline for the patio. I'm now going to get this bottom edge of the wall with the opening where I am at the moment with this point is this corner now if we're going from this corner in that direction it means we're going to our vanishing point however now we need to come in this direction that would mean that we are going away from our vanishing point so at this corner at the base I'm going to project a line from this edge going away from my left vanishing point to find this point now I draw my line towards my stationary point and where it hits the picture plane I then project my line down vertically Here is going to be this wall in my shape. I'm going to find where the opening is and where the furthest edge of the wall is now. So, how do I need to remember this? At this point, if we follow my pink line, it means I'm going towards the right vanishing point so I need to take this corner that I've just found and project that towards my right vanishing point I'm going to take these corners down this inside edge as well to my picture plane in line with the stationary point There I've taken the wall corner, the wall on the inside, the other edge and the final edge and I'm now going to project these lines down vertically. Remember all these lines from your top view always get projected to the stationary point. There's one opening. This is the inside edge of your 
wall, the outside edge of the wall, and the end of the wall. The last little section I need to fix here will be this inside edge from the front edge of my opening to the back edge. So that point needs to be going to the left vanishing point. So where it touches the front edge, I can project that line to the left vanishing point. And where that intersects with this vertical line, there is my edge. I'm going to spend some time just going over these lines in pen. You obviously won't be using pen. I'm just trying to do it so it's a little bit easier to see which are going to be my outlines. I'm now going to look at finishing off the base of this house. So from this edge, which was this edge, the shape is coming on a pink line. But remember, going to the vanishing point would be in this direction. So what this means is that we are going to be going away from the right vanishing point here until we hit that corner. At that corner, it becomes a blue line which is going towards my left vanishing point. So from that base corner, I need to just project my line going out away from my right vanishing point. Now to find the actual point, I project that corner to where it's going to hit the picture plane going towards the stationary point. And now I project that point down. I'm now going towards my left vanishing point. Where is that point going to finish? Here is the back corner of my shape projecting towards the stationary point where it hits the picture plane. Project that line down. It's somewhere along there. I'm just going to go over that in an outline now just to make it more visible. At this point I'm going to jump ahead to do the roof aspect. The roof is going to cover certain parts of my shape so I don't know how high we need to project these lines. Now with the roof we have some problems because it doesn't touch the picture plane anyway. There are two method, methods of getting the heights. The one method I refer to as the spider method which involves you using points that you can find on your actual drawing and then changing direction when you hit a corner to get to that point. So for argument's sake, we might take a height level here, project up this edge. Where it hits that edge, it would change direction and go away from the left vanishing point to where it hit this edge of the wall. Then from that edge, we could then project it to the right vanishing point to find any point that we need. The other method I've referred to as the false center method. So what happens is we create our own center line. Remember the center line I refer to is the line that we can take heights across to. How do we create a false center line? We could project it to the edge of the picture plane and take it down. And that, if you projected the height to where that point was, would give you the true height. And then you could project it either to your left or right vanishing point however you wanted. I'm going to try and use that method at the moment to get the roof, the false center method. 
Here I'm going to create a full center, so I'm taking this highest point of my roof. I project that line, I'll extend that line to hit my picture plane. Where it hits the picture plane, it creates what I call a false center. I now take that line down. And here is my false center. Now I'm trying to find the top of my roof so I can now project the height across to my false center. And there it is. So that gives me this exact point at the front of my shape. And I can now if it's going to fall along the blue line, I can then project it to my left vanishing point. Now we can find the points like we've done before. Here is the edge of that roof. Project that point to my stationary point where it touches the picture plane I can draw that edge down and there is that front edge second point we've got here so this was the point we've got here already the end of my roof is at this edge here Follow that to where it hits the stationary point. There's the point there. I now project that line down vertically. And there is the end of my roof. Sorry, I see this edge here I need to find as well. So let's Follow the same process, take it down to where it hits the picture plane. Where it hits the picture plane, I project that line down vertically. And there is that edge. I'm going to create false centers to find the edges of the roof now. So to do that we need to project the line and extend it at the same angle to touch the picture plane. Project those lines down. So there's my next full center and another full center let's start by finding this edge so the height of the corner of the roof is the same on both sides so I can actually use those measurements already if I look at this full center there's the height there and I now need to project it back that would be my blue line which is going towards my left vanishing point the same on the other side so let's project these lines to my left vanishing point I'm going to stop there, I'm not going to be seeing any of the roof beyond that shape on this side there is the line going back now let's find the specific points by taking the specific point from the top view there's this one edge projecting it down to your stationary point and stopping where it hits the picture plane Project those lines down now. Let 
Here's the front edge of this reef. And here is the back edge of that reef. Those two points. On this side we project it down. And now take it down to that point. And there is this edge over here. I'm just going to go over those in dark at the moment. Here is the back edge of my reef. Here is the opening. that I've gone a little bit too far with. I had to stop there. Now this edge came up to that edge now. And you see I've got a little problem here. Made that a little bit long. And then we've got this little piece underneath here. So there is the edge of this roof. This is the overhang going back towards the vanishing point. Here is the edge running up at this corner is where it's running to this edge, to the end and down on the other side. Let's take a look at doing the, the opening here in the semicircle. What I'm going to do for this one now is find this front edge of the wall and I'm going to turn that into a false center so I'm taking that parallel and extending it to where it hits my picture plane where it hits the picture plane I'm drawing the line down now I need my height measurement here is the height at the top before it starts the semicircle. I haven't extended that far enough down. And there it is. Project that now across. That is my pink line. And there is my highest point there. So I've extended these lines a little bit far. My next height is the top of my circle. Here's the highest point of my circle, and I'm going to project that line across now. This now gives me a bit of a box shape, a little bit similar to what we could do in an isometric drawing. So there's the highest point. And in here, I need to find my semicircle. Much the same as any circle that we've done in our low key, is to divide it up the pizza slices. So here are our pizza slices. And we're going to have to take the height measurements across. Take them across to my false center. So they are the three hearts that we need for this drawing. Again, from here we can take them across to our vanishing point. Now in the top view I need to find my pizza slices as well. So I'm taking my compass to draw an arc here and then draw in my pizza slices.
There are my pizza slices. And I now need to take them to the front edge of the wall. There they've taken to the front edge. And now we follow that same process that we've done before where the lines are, we project them to our stationary point where they hit the picture plane, we project them down vertically we have got the outside edge on the left, we've got the outside edge on the right we've got the center line those points are already here there's my outside edge there's my highest point and there's the lowest point on the other side so it's just these two points. Now what I'm going to do is take these two points because they will be the lowest pizza slices after the edge. Project them to the stationary point where it hits. The picture plane will stop and the same on the other side. Where those points touch now, project the lines down vertically. There's my next point on the other side. Just check that you're projecting the right point. There we go. The next two points. When we do these lines, I try not to do too many at the same time because it gets confusing. And that would be my suggestion to you, don't do them all at the same time, otherwise you're going to confuse yourself. Here's the next point. So it went upper height, point on the other side, it went upper height, and there are the points that I need. If we join that up in You would be using your flexi curve, French curves to get the shape a little bit like a helix, getting those edges to join up. So there is the front edge. We would now project the lines back because we will see some of the curve on the inside. And there is the curve on the inside. The last thing I have to do now is the fireplace, so putting in the pry and the chimney. I've erased some of my lines on the inside here, just so it should hopefully be more visible to you what I've been doing. Remember, there might be this inside line here, I'm not sure, they haven't given you a wall thickness here. This was that outside edge which I've included. For me, the best way of drawing the bra place is going to be to use this back wall to create the shape on the back wall and then project the lines away from the left vanishing point to get the shape. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the height levels for the bra here. And what I want to do is find my false center. Now what I'm going to look at doing is creating a false center on this side. Why? Because as I project the lines across, I'll be able to mark off two points each time. If I had to bring this forward, I would probably need to find more points using the false center method. So I'm going to take my line across here to create a false center. Remember it's extending the line parallel. Here is my edge. To create the false center, let's project this line down.
and this gives me a full center. So while I'm there, I can take these lines across to my full center and take them to the right vanishing point. Now to find where those points are, I'm going to take those edges and project them to my stationary point. Where they hit the stationary point, I'm going to draw them down. And I've projected the lines towards my stationary point and I can now take them down vertically. I've projected the lines down from my points on the picture plane and if I had to join that up that would give me an outline of my fireplace from here now I'm going to project from that edge away from my left vanishing point Here I've projected all my lines forward. Now I need to take a point from here. Now you can take all of those points. Might be a long way of doing it. I'm going to show you something else that you can do. If I pick one of my points, project it down. and draw it down to touch. That gives me that distance there. Now this shape has to stay the same measurement. So what you can do is take a paper trammel, get that distance with a paper trammel, and then you could go to each point and just mark off the same distance. and now uh, join up those points. At the same time you could project this line across to that finishing point and it will give you a point as well. There is my bra place. To finish off I now need to get the chimney. What I'm going to do for the chimney is use this edge that is touching the back wall and find where those points are. Where those points are I can project forward and then project these points down and get what my little square chimney is going to look like on top of the fireplace. There I found those two edges and projected them down. So now I project away from the vanishing point those two points and now we can take the front edge of the shape the front edge down to my stationary point where it hits and now projecting this line and there we've got that tiny little space now to get the other side I'm just going to project that to the other vanishing point There is that little square pop. And now we need to find the top of that shape. What I'm going to do for the top of the shape is use my false center method again to find this edge. It's getting taken across to the back edge of the chimney. 
take the hot level and project it across. Which gives me these two points. I've just darkened up the inside of my chimney. I've still got these two back points of the chimney over here. And what I could do is project away from the vanishing point to where it hits the front edge. What I want to do now is just find what the shape looks like where it hits the roof. Now I'm going to actually come across and do that by creating another full center for those respective heights. Take these down. Now, this is my lowest point, so it's going to come to this first edge. I'm going to take that lowest point, now I'll project it back to my left vanishing point, and it's going to give me that little piece there. Then on the other side, the higher point, project that away, and there's going to be my highest point. See up there, a tiny little chimney space there. And that is the completed 2017, sorry, 2014 trial paper.